Alrighty, folks, we're back on the zoo with Gloria Calderon Callet from Netflix new show, One Day at a Time. Welcome, darling. Hello. Yes. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome. All right, girl, we're going to get things started with a little hua, so we're going to count it through, we're going to scream hua, and we're going to sit down. You got okay. it? Yep. One, two, three. Hua! Oh, that always wakes me up. <laughs> so. Okay, wait, for, before anything, yeah. I thought you were, like, cute and short before I noticed that you have I shoes. So you're even shorter. I love these shoes. I'm, I need five them. One. I'm five one. I'm five one. Did we get a close-up of those shoes? Yeah. Those are some amazing I shoes. I feel like I'm green because I require less natural resources <laughs> to live. I you, need those. I love them. You have so less cool. of a carbon footprint. Uh, yes, footprint. yes. Right, and, and an actual literal nice. footprint as well. <laughs> You're green, but your show is red hot because it's a remake of this show from the 70s that it is. I think is a TV classic. And like, how in the world did you guys choose? Oh, we've got a clip? Yeah. Oh, we've got a clip. Okay, let's take a look at this clip of One Day at a Time. I want to see what it looks like. Hi! Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Shh, 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 shh. We're just having a nightmare. You are not at war. You are home. You are safe. Everything is okay, okay? Except I'm 38 years old sleeping with my mom. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Are you wearing makeup? <laughs> of course. What if I got up in the middle of the night and I ran into someone? <laughs> like you might barge in on Julio Iglesias in the bathroom? <laughs> you don't know where Julio spends his time. <laughs> and I need to look nice in case I die in my sleep. Right. Oh, I love fun. it. That reminds me so much of my grandma. Rest in peace. I loved Aww. her. She used to wake up every morning at 6 and always be super beautiful. And I remember asking her, Abby, why would, like, why do you do this if you never get out of your house? And she was like, I always need to feel beautiful See, for Anami. myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So I then, yeah. it's a good lesson, huh? It, Let me tell you. It always rouge, the rouge, rouge, and I mean, to go get the mail, it's rouge. It's rouge, and look, she looks Is like your mom Latina? See, good. No, I'm not to, 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 to go get which mail, honey? The mail in the mailbox or the mail with the, you know, with a... To go to the mail, to go to either, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're, wait, you're Cubana, born in yeah. Cuba? No, no, my parents were born in Cuba. Especially when I came over in 1962. So you're from Miami? No, I know. I'm from Miami. I'm Cuban from Miami. There's, we are all also other places. <laughs> like where? Here in LA or in Chicago or New Jersey? It's either I was New in Jersey. San Diego. I San Diego. Diego. Wow. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So what you is, stuck at you, you stood out. Yeah. What does oh, this God. version of One Day at a Time take place? This takes place in Echo Park. It takes place oh. in Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, we it's largely based on me and my mom. Okay. And uh, really? that's yeah. so fun. Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, Norman Lear, who's the legendary Norman Lear who did one day to, or the original one right. day at a time and all in the family, and he asked to have lunch with me and, and I was like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he talked about wanting to do a Latino version. He'd he'd done many African American shows right. with great success oh, and yes. really made an impact. The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons and Good Times yeah. and, and um and he really, really wanted to do something for our community. Why this show in particular, though? Because there's been talk about All in the Family possibly getting revived. Yes. Um, but one day at a time, I guess, they, did they won the Norman Lear lottery of, of TV shows? You know, that's the one that they came to me with. Okay. And they, I married. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Calm down, man. But I, he asked me, he said, what would it be like if, if you got divorced? What would that be like? And mm. I said, well, my parents are in my house every day. You know, for, li really. Like every, they pick up my kids from school. We have dinner every night. So if if my husband and I got divorced, they'd move in for sure. Right. <laughs> and so I, I was talking to him about it, and I talked. To, my mom looks a lot like Rita Moreno, and I told Norman that, and he was like, "I know Rita. Maybe she'd want to do oh. the show." So Rita Moreno is wearing a wig to look like my mom's hair. Wow! That's and so the funny. amazing Justina Machado plays a version of me. We we've also made her a veteran because we wanted to talk about Latinos in the military, and Norman is a veteran. He flew like 52 combat missions in World War II. He's wow. amazing. And we wanted to honor our veterans as well. So is he supervising the production of the show as well? He's there all the time. Wow. He's there all the time. Because he's, what, 90 now? 90. Three. Yeah, no, maybe ninety-four. Yeah, I heard that actually. Um, him and, and Sumner Redstone are going to have a one-on-one -on -one basketball game later this week, in case you guys want to catch it. My money is on and whoever, whoever scores the first one wins. So, Gloria, you are like to me, like from what I know, um, the guru of pilot writing. Pilot, pilot writing. I don't know like, about you that. You are so good at that. Are you planning on like giving some kind of 
course, writing course. You know, I do teach. Really? Oh, nice. Yes, I'm a professor at Loyola Marymount in the off season. Love it. Nice. And I also do, when I can, I try to do an online class through the Writing Pad. They're a wonderful organization. And it's all around the world. You can take my class online That's through awesome. the Writing Pad. That's awesome. I have friends in Europe that would probably would yes, love to take if and they I, want to write pilots and stuff. And you're amazing at this, so. Thank you. Well, but that, that's wow. very interesting because, okay, so, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, that want to get break into showbiz and develop themselves, you know, they often think, let me do the acting thing. But it's really cool when you see writers develop their own show and then they also get to act in it. How did that happen? How did? Well, because I started as an actor. Oh. And it was 10 years ago, and I'm not kidding when I say, this is a direct quote from a thing I auditioned for. Mm -hmm. Everything was a version of, Chewie, put the gun down. <laughs> okay. Like, no joke. Okay. It was a gangbanger's girlfriend, a gangbanger's sister. A ga that was it. Okay. And I did not get this role because I don't, I guess I don't scream gangbanger to uh, uh, okay. casting directors. And I was like, there's not like a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher or a cop or a Latino. Really? And so I decided to start writing my experiences, thinking surely somebody must relate to my stories of just parents, you know, working and living. I didn't know people in gangs growing up. <laughs> How I Met Your Thank Mother you. has a ton of your stories, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Which so, I thought was hilarious. Yes. I love that show. I watched it from beginning to end. Which I love one? it. How I Met Your Mother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I was there for 64, 64 huge. episodes. Yeah. Huge. What do you pick up from the people that you work with? Because you have worked with some of the biggest you know, execs or, you know, behind the scenes people on TV. You've had Norman Lear, mm -hmm. you've had Mark Cherry mm -hmm. on Devious Maid. <laughs> yes. Do they have a common denominator, these people? I think they are unafraid. I think they're unafraid to have a voice. And I think that, uh, to your point about Latinos coming out here and wanting to be represented, I think that it starts from backstage. It starts behind the scenes, and we need to get more Latinos behind the scenes telling stories. And that was a very important part of our writers' room because, in I've been blessed with an incredible career where I've been pretty much the only Latina and the only woman in many of these writing rooms. Amen to that. Hey. And when when uh, it came time to do this show, me and my partner Mike Royce, the incredible Mike Royce from Everybody Loves Raymond and Men of a Certain Age, he and I both really wanted to make sure that the behind the scenes represented what was in front of the camera. And there's more Latinos also helping Latinos in yes. the media and industry. Um, also behind the scenes producers, casting directors, writers. Mm -hmm. And then all these booms with like Isla's High and all these like mm -hmm. um, Jane the Virgin, mm -hmm. all these Latino shows that are booming. So and we also I think have we have a good future. Well, we have a lot of Latinos working behind the scenes here. I love it. I love it. Behind the scenes too. I love it. It's great. <laughs> that is the best way to make sure stories, our stories are told if, is, is if we tell them. Oh, oh wow. Darling. We're well, so proud of you. I'm so happy yeah, that you exist. You guys. Thank, Thank you so you much guys. for joining us <laughs> Thank today. Thank you guys. My Thank pleasure. You, yeah. All right.